famous Arvind Eye Care Hospital performing 1,500 surgeries daily. All entities owe their success to highly effective and synchronized operating model attributing operations excellence. Be it humanitarian supply chain, military operations, natural disaster management or workings of global businesses, operations excellence is a strategic weapon to many. Symbiosis Institute of Operations Management, NASIC, a forerunner in anticipating the criticality that the field of operations beholds, is India's only institute fully dedicated to operations excellence. Under the gamut of Symbiosis International University, SIOM is a sui generis institution established with the mission of empowering and leading operations excellence. True to its mission, SIOM has been fueling the industry with operations professionals churned out of its flagship MBA program in operations management exclusively for engineers since its inception in 2005. Owing to its contributions to the field of operations, SIOM has grown beyond laurels of best industry-related curriculum and it is all geared up towards Industry 5.0 with inclusion of machine learning, artificial intelligence and IIoT. Providing an excellent industry interface, SIOM, now an operational excellence hub, attracts top recruiters for operations-related profiles. SIOM boasts of its alumni presence and recruiters' network in top companies across the sectors, be it manufacturing, logistics, retail, e-commerce, hospitality, banking and financial services, consultancy, pharmaceutical and many more. Surmounting credibility by corporate recruiters is an outcome of holistic and multidisciplinary engagement of students, be it technical expertise, leadership values or social sensibility initiatives strategically woven in overall learning environment. Backed with robust project-based learning, Harvard simulations, case studies, research orientation and strategic industry interface through research conference, guest lectures, HR Summit, Operations Summit Tatwa, TEDx and two internships. The students are all geared up to take on the challenges of rapidly evolving technological capabilities and value chain complexities, the critical areas of concern for every organization today. SIOM with intent of knowledge dissemination offers corporate training programs, customized certifications and consultancy services in the area of operations. Some of our past and current beneficiaries include multinational corporations like GE, GSK and many more. Connect to us for anything and everything related to operations. SIM pulsates with the conviction that future CEOs and industry leadership will emerge from operations and supply chain domain and we feel responsible towards it. This citadel of learning and competency development is exclusively for working executives, MBA aspirants and the corporates. We act as catalyst to fuel their careers and of course develop operations competencies within organizations. This love for our niche has developed key result area which will impact your triple bottom lines very, very positively. A perfect symbiosis of industry and academia SIM is one-stop shop for everyone who is excited about operations management. I invite you to SIOM, not just to fuel your talent supply chain, but also to engage with us on your operations expertise and experiences. Come, let's engage. Connect to the best in operations. Engage with SIOM for operations excellence.
A very good evening to one and all. Symbiosis Institute of Operations Management, Nashik, takes pleasure in bringing to you the first ever webisode of Editor's Choice. This is a platform for deliberations by editors from reputable journals. Today we have with us Dr. Rameshwar Dubey, who pioneers in research in the field of operations and supply chain management. Before we hear from him, let me introduce Dr. Vandana Sonwane, Director SIOM, who would make the opening remarks. Dr. Vandana Sonwane has rich experience spanning over 27 years in corporates, academics, and consulting. Her exemplary work in curriculum development focused on continually evolving competency requirements of the industry, culminated in shaping a niche institute in the field of operations management that SIOM stands for today and speedily evolving into a center of operations excellence. Under her able leadership, SIOM backed best industry interface and best industry oriented curriculum every year since 2009. And this year, SIOM received the prestigious education award uh, 2018 by the Confederation of International Accreditation Commission Forum in Delhi. She is a recipient of Distinguished Service Award for her contribution to fostering management research on the CII India Women's Network Council. She received the Indian Leadership Award for Education Excellence by All India Achievers Foundation and the Outstanding B School uh, Director Award in 2019. She is on the National Board of SME Chamber of India. On the research front, she has more than 20 publications in international journals, most of which are in reputable peer-reviewed journals. She is a reviewer for a number of peer-reviewed international journals with 126 citations, H index of six and I10 index of four. Her focus on research is immense. Under her guidance, SIOM contributed to meaningful research through work in humanitarian logistics, project management, sustainability, sustainable solutions during the Mammoth uh, Kumbh Mela at Nashik. She has led a number of projects on humanitarian logistics, such as Project Shuddhi on the usage of biodigesters during the Kumbh Mela and Project Sanchar with the Nashik police. SIOM also partnered with MIT to bring to Nashik Kumbhathon, which was a sandbox event of MIT. I now hand over the session to Dr. Vandana Sonwani for her opening remarks. All yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ratna. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Very good morning. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. I can see that we have an audience from UK, Europe, Middle East. Hence, good morning and good evening, good afternoon to all. Uh, it is my pleasure, in fact, immense pleasure to welcome Dr. Rameshwar Dubey and uh, all the participants to this very unique event. Uh, COVID has seen a lot of traffic on the screen time of, with plethora of webinars happening all across the globe. So thank you for joining this one. Uh, I'm sure you found some meaning here, yeah? So SIM takes pride in hosting this event for two reasons. And uh, one, we wanted to bring the editors and the research writers on a single platform to have conversations on their deepest thoughts, hunches, uh, views that are so critical to our research publications. Second, we also wanted to enthuse the researchers, academicians, and industry to find their own unique role in contributing to the knowledge creation for inquiry or analysis or application. Uh, so Editor's Choice is a new event of, from the SIOM's brand wagon and with the mission of being the learning and a research focused institute, you know, uh, we want to pledge to nurture this dynamic culture of academic research. Uh, I've always believed that editors are like designers of better knowledge. They are designers of better communicators. Yeah, uh, The design they have in mind for your publication is the learning we wish uh, for through this editor's uh, choice event as such. 
So we, we have participants from all across logged in here and I'm, I'm sure the YouTube streaming has also started. And uh, hence, it, this will be a good gathering to interact with and of course, listen to Dr. Rameshwar Dubey. It is my uh, pleasure to present to you Dr. Rameshwar Dubey as an inaugural speaker of the Editor's Choice, uh, the webisode series that we, would, we are foreseeing to have every fortnight. Uh, a passionate researcher, I have seen Dr. Dubey's focus in his early years here at SIOM itself. Uh, in my 27 years of uh, experience in education, uh, I have not seen a shooting star uh, res in research like Dr. Dubey, you know, you should uh, progressed and the way he has, he has uh, uh, developed his own style of writing uh, and of course research contributions to the field. I'm sure you will all have a very, very enriching experience listening to him. Thank you and please enjoy the evening. Over to you, Dr. Ratna. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am, for your remarks. Uh, let me now introduce you to the man and the team behind this event, Dr. Arun Kumar and the research committee of SION. They have worked relentlessly to bring to you this event. <coughs> Dr. Arun Kumar, please. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you all for uh, attending this function, as well as uh, Dubey sir for uh, uh, accepting our invitation uh, to uh, get start this function, sir. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, as researchers, who wouldn't want to uh, take guidance for writing good research publications. And what better can it be than to hear it from the editors themselves? So without any further delay, let me just introduce you to our expert for this first webisode, Dr. Rameshwar Dubey. With more than 150 international publications, Dr. Rameshwar Dubey is an expert researcher in the field of operations and supply chain management. He has been shortlisted amongst the top 1% cited scholars based on Web of Science database. Coming to his service as an editor and a reviewer, he is a senior editor of International Journal of Physical Distribution and Logistics Management. He's an associate editor for Journal of Humanitarian Logistics and Supply Chain Management, International Journal of Information Management, Benchmarking and International Journal, Global a journal of Flexible Systems Management, Management of Environment Quality. He's also a consulting editor of Hospital Topics, which is a reputable journal in the field of healthcare operations. Some of his best papers were published in journals such as International Journal of Operations and Production Management, International Journal of Production Economics, International Journal of Production Research, and the list goes on. He's currently affiliate professor Supply Chain Management at Montpelier Business School. He's also a reader operations management at Liverpool Business School, Liverpool John Moores University. Before joining Liverpool Business School, he was a full-time associate professor supply chain ma management at Montpelier Business School, France. He has also taught at many leading international schools, which include IIM Jammu, Faculty of Engineering, UNS, UNESP, Brazil, uh, Southern University of Science and Technology of China, Stockholm School of Business, Sweden, Odentia Business School, France. He has also received several awards for his academic work. Outstanding Reviewer Award from the International Journal of Production Economics, Journal of Business Research, Journal of Cleaner Production. He has received the best uh, reviewer award from the Journal of Humanitarian Logistics and Supply Chain Management and Management Decision. On 8th November 2019, he received at BAU, Brazil for lifetime commitment to advancing scientific knowledge on supply chain management, operations management, both in Brazil and worldwide. Dr. Rameshwar is an active member of several professional societies and an active reviewer of more than 75 leading international scientific journals and a reviewer of PhD thesis and a member on various professional bodies engaged in the dissemination of grant. I now hand over this session to Professor Rameshwar Dubey. All yours, sir.
I think Professor Rameshwar needs to unmute himself. We are not able to listen to him. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. So can can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We okay, can. that's good. So uh, I was actually agenda of my presentation. Actually, I will start because I don't want to waste my time about myself. Thank you very much to Professor Ratna, who ha was given an extensive description about myself, and I was wondering that exactly that after like we start, I started my journey almost a decade back with Symbiosis Institute of Operations Management. And since then, I've covered a, a, a long distance, which I am realizing now, and yet a long way to go. Uh, so I've classified my presentations based on the inputs which I have received. I, thanks to Arun, Professor Arun, who, I, who took a pain to share the uh, some of the suggestions and some of the inputs offered by some of the potential uh, viewers. And I took a, I ensure, I assured that, you know, that should be represented in my presentation well. So what are the like concerns and whenever I go to any conferences, especially when I meet most of my Indian colleagues, especially from Indian subcontinent, uh, uh, when I meet some of the people from the other Asian countries, they always have certain level of myths actually, which I believe that need to be broken at this stage. We need to get eliminated because I hope that these myths are actually acting like a big bottleneck in the publishing path, uh, which is not true. Uh, Maybe true in some cases, but that is not significant enough and should not be act like a barrier. So we need to eliminate these kind of myths in the mind of the scholars, especially the PhD students and early career researcher, so that they should not waste their time just thinking over these negative issues, which are acting like a barrier to their publishing paths and improving their teaching curriculum and so on. How do we classify our publications? And today we are like living in the era of ABTC, but we have to understand that ABTC is a list published by Australian Business Teams Council. Now, recently, actually, most of the IITs and the top IIMs have started uh, looking after the ABS, which is a Chartered Association of Business School list, which is a very comprehensive list, and CNRS list published in France, which is, again, I believe that one of the toughest lists I've seen in my life, uh, because very rigorous, and they are very particular about the quality of the journals, and followed by ABDC. So these are the three important, uh, you know, the classification schemes. Then my discussion will be why ABS4 publications or ABDCA star or CNRS1 or FENAG1. Uh, CNRS and FENAG, as I told you, that's a list published by French uh, business schools. ABDC as published by the Australian and New Zealand business schools and ABS, which is published by UK and there are many other countries that accept this UK list. Almost everyone is now accepting. How do we, how to develop appropriate strategy for publishing these elite list of journals? This is something which is very, very important. And unfortunately, we have not been working on these strategies. I have seen that uh, most of the authors, they just try to publish in a trial and error mode, which is not appropriate. And I caution people who are developing their manuscript that they should avoid this kind of strategy rather than they should have a robust strategy in place in order to ensure or assure their Manuscript should get published in a top elite list of journals. What are the competitive priorities that we need to understand for developing a good research manuscript for reputable outlets? How do you manage the expectations of the editors and the reviewers? And this is the broad objective of this kind of session is to understand exactly how editors and reviewers look the manuscript and how authors look their manuscript. And there has to be a synergy between these two perspectives then only we'll be able to meet the expectations. And then I, I always talk about AAA because it's something which is my favorite. And I always try to put even publishing into this AAA strategies. So what are the five myths of publishing in top journals? I'm putting I because I'm representing all individual researcher I. 
I have collected which data are using advanced scientific tools. Actually, unfortunately, this is the something which I need to clarify to all doctoral students, all early research careers, researchers and professors who are teaching research methodology or training their scholars to write a good manuscript that research articles are published in reputable journals, not for the sake of rich data or sake of advanced scientific tool. This is the biggest myth most of the scholars do carry. First of all, we don't care about advanced scientific tool. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Indian subcontinent the scholars from the day one, they talk about the topic, talking about the research topic or theory, they talk about MOS, PLS, HP, GHP, this, that, you know, I'm somehow becoming sick of listening all and probably it is not their fault because unfortunately it has been fed into their mind that you know if you use these advanced tools then your papers get published unfortunately this is totally wrong and there is no linkage between the quality of the manuscript with the advanced scientific tools because i can easily tell that those who are teaching multivariate statistics they will agree with me that i can find out the similar outcome of the pls or mos using excel if you know all the equations and you know all the theory. For example, I'll tell you that based on Fawn and Alaska 1981 seminal work published in Journal of Marketing Research, I can calculate scale composite reliability, average variance extracted without going through all advanced statistical tool. Yes, advanced statistical tool saves time, but doesn't help you to, you know, to save your manuscript because this is, has got nothing to do with that. Moreover, people have a wrong conception about rich data or have got a data. This is something wrong. Again, you collect data to test your research, test your theory, test your hypothesis. And the sample size should not be the major concern. It's simple that as long as your data is normally distributed, whether it's a 500 sample or 700 samples or 1000, it's irrelevant. So if you have to understand the fundamental actually, and this is something which I believe that, you know, without understanding the fundamental statistics, people try to, you know, enter into the multivariate statistics era, which is totally wrong. And we should understand properly. I'm attached to a big school. Again, this is a wrong myth. People believe that if you're from Harvard, MIT, Cambridge or Oxford, you can publish paper in a top journal. Sorry, editors don't care whether you come from which school. Good editors don't care. This is the number one thing. I've got nothing to do with a big school. Yes, big school professors often publishes their articles in a top journal because big schools have a very robust mechanism of selecting their faculty members and they are the best people in the world. That's why they, you find that these schools are having multiple publications. But I can tell you that there are many instances actually. And in fact, Dr. Vandana Ma'am my, my, is a, one of the person in front of me. She would agree that in 2013, when I uh, submitted my article in International Journal of Production Economics, which was the A-star publication, and after my 10 subsequent failure, I was also wondering that this might be true, but it was not true actually. The reason that my articles got rejected, there are several other reasons, which actually I later on understood that these are the loopholes in my manuscript, which I worked on extensively. And my first IJP paper got accepted in 2014 and it was my 11th success after 10 subsequent failures. So I don't fear failure because I believe each failure teaches you something which actually your success probably would not have taught you. So don't think that the top editors, their papers are not getting rejected. No, if you see that I've got eight, nine manuscript published in IGP, that means I've got, also got 30 rejections in the past. But yes, with the passage of time, with broader understanding, with broader learning, we minimize the rejection rate. And this is what I discussed with my professor in my school and my Liverpool colleagues that, you know, we need to work on the factors which actually pull down your manuscript. So we need to work on that. I'm working with editors. This is again another myth. Editors, first of all, the name of the editor doesn't help you to publish an article in a top journal. This is totally a wrong concept. In fact, many people doesn't know that most of my articles got rejected uh, with actually I have 
written with co-authored with some of the top scholars that doesn't mean that edit you can save the article so reviewers are not aware who is the person writing because most of the papers are double blind review and in double blind review, the names don't carry any weight as long as reviewers feel that this manuscript is a sufficient have certain capabilities they will they can actually survive this is another myth that i've collected data from developed economies i don't have a data from india so it will not survive this is wrong the many articles which are getting published in academy of management journal which is the the, the best journal in the world management science they all data have been collected either from india or china so you have to accept that these are the developing countries and they are in the experimental mode and probably their data will help to test the theories which has been established so i this is a wrong notion in fact please collect your data in a proper way following the ethical guidelines and i'm sure that nobody can stop you from you know publishing a good article rather than understand the physics dynamics of publications are i'm from indian subcontinent again this is a myth actually because many people must have realized that may not have realized that in recent years in last 5 years especially indian institute of bangalore or iit delhi and some of the top schools in india have shown a significant rise in terms of public shape publication of top top tier journals in fact now the now i i know my couple of person like dr abhishek bail who just id bombay with his phd and he has published in a sar journal and uh, there are many uh, people like i know that they have been publishing in fact i know some of the students from i am bangalore they are published in a financial times listed journal so it's wrong actually that i'm from indian subcontinent that's why papers are not getting accepted this is totally a myth so first of all there are many myths actually but i thought that these are the five myths which i believe that i have from people from various corners and i thought i should deliberate and i should speak actually Sorry, you know, I'm. I think I got. So, this is something which we need to understand. So, what do? How do you classify uh, your journals? Can you see my PPT? Hello. Yes, we can. Hello. We can see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Could you go, please? Could you go to the slide show, please? Can you see this? Yes, sir. I request you to put it on the slide, the slide show mode. Slide show. Is it okay? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. So let me. Okay. So, I'm. Okay. So how do you classify your journals actually? So I have classified the five important list. abs uh, as you know that abs uh, we have abs 4 abs c star abs 2 and abs 1 abs 4 star represent the high quality journals the journals which are known for the scientific rigor and the articles which are getting published in abs 4 star journals after several rounds of review undertaken by the editor in chief area editor followed by top reviewers and then after subsequent round of revision sometimes it goes up to four and five rounds of revisions and then finally you get a acceptance in this kind of journal followed by abs c star abs c star is equally very competitive in fact there are many journals in abs c star which are abdc a star journals actually in fact there are some journals in abs 2 also which are so that's why i'm saying the uk and the cnrs list are quite tougher in that respect like for example information system journals or information and management they are a star journal or european journal of marketing a star journal but they are in abs c star category so the journals which are in abs c star category are equally competitive in fact international journal production economy sir you are muted muted please okay okay so the journals which are published in abs 4 listed in abs 4 and abs 3 star they are very competitive journals so the articles which are getting published in these journals are really deserve merit and they are well cited and they are well representing the a given field actually followed by france cnrs list actually rank 1 is equivalent to abs 4 star 
and rank two is equivalent to ABS three star. But there are many journals actually which are ABS four, but they are in rank two in CNRS. So again, it is another list which is bit more rigorous and are actually are representing. So CNRS have very less journals actually. Can you imagine that the many journals which are in ABDC A category, but they are not listed in CNRS list. Followed by ABDC. Now, ABDC is a list actually published for the Australia and New Zealand. So please do not think that, you know, in India, actually, unfortunately, most of the business schools are adopting directly ABDC list. Probably ABDC is the best representative. But I tell you, if you want to become a rigor or you want to adopt scientific rigor, so please refer to ABS and CNRS list because now time has come when Indian business schools should move from ABDC to ABS and CNRS now. And of course, if you go to I am Bangalore or I am Ahmedabad or I am Calcutta, the professors are only concerned about FT because 50. And that's why it is quite well understood that if you see among the top uh, Financial Times ranking, the I am Bangalore is among the top 30, Indian School of Business Hyderabad, I am Ahmedabad and I am Calcutta, they're among the top 100 business school in terms of Financial Times. And this clearly suggests that how these business schools in India they're doing wonderful jobs. Similarly, in UK and uh, if you go to like France, HEC Paris, or you go to even in my school like Montpellier or in Liverpool, the people are really like, you know, aggressive about publishing in this kind of journals list. And probably this is the, uh, you know, list which I recommend every PhD student to read their articles. If you really design your manuscript based on financial time, I'm damn sure that you're going to get a publication in ABDC star and ABS4 without any problem. Followed by UT Dallas, which is again a very comprehensive and very tough list because there are many FT ranked journals which are not listed in UT Dallas. And that's why uh, if, you, if you go to Indian School of Business Hyderabad, or if you go to like any top US schools, or if you go to like, you know, Cambridge or Oxford, they follow UT Dallas list. And for them, Financial Times is no more relevant. But I'm saying that these are the broader list which a scholar should adopt. Time has gone. 10 years ago, yes, Scopus Index journals matter most, but I believe that we are now living in an era where Scopus Index is the basic and we should move from Scopus to this elite list of publishing body, if you are from business school, actually. Now, what is the purpose of undertaking research in management? And this is something which we need to understand. I've seen that most of the scholars doesn't have clarity when it comes to undertaking research in management. And this is something which is disheartening. And this is something which is creating a problem for the editors and the reviewers. We have to understand that when we talk about research in management, we have to provide theory to explain complex business operations. ABS four-star journal, or in, in fact, some of the ABS three-star journals, they only publishes those articles which creates or which contributes or helps to advance the existing theory. If you do not do all these things, probably these articles cannot get published in ABS four or reputable ABS three-star journal. In fact, uh, recently now, International Journal of Information Management, which is ranked as a, among the ABDC star, and probably in next uh, ABS cycle, we are expecting ABS three star status. We are becoming very cautious about selecting a manuscript. And until and unless the manuscript doesn't contribute to the theory, we are rejecting the paper, just rejecting the paper, because we don't want to waste the time of the uh, authors and reviewers. Secondly, to help bridge the wide gap that exists between theory and practice. And I always tell my scholars and my colleagues that please read the articles uh, written by Alveson and Sandberg. Uh, Alveson Sandberg article published in 2011 in Academy of Management Review and a similar version was published in Organizational Methods, Research Method. And probably these two articles offered by Alveson Sandberg helps you to design your research question. How to formulate your research question, which is the heart of a manuscript. Unfortunately, there is one observation which I have seen that people doesn't have a clarity between objective and research questions. Research questions are derived from objective, not the objectives are derived from the research questions. And I'm sorry to say that if people are still commit this kind of blunder, they should redo their PhD degree. I feel that. To enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of the business practices. This is something which is very, very important. 
because today any articles which are published in a top reputable journals they look for theory at the same time they look at what actually this theory can help to solve the complex business problems and this is something which is most important the theory and practice sections are very very important and it should not be written in a sloppy manner in fact 50% of the time for developing a manuscript only goes in developing discussion section and which is unfortunately people don't spend much time they spend much time maximum effort only in writing the data analysis section come on we don't care about data analysis everybody know that uh, the softwares are there to perform the data analysis so why not we publish the name of publish the article in the name of uh, you know spss or mos or what pls whatever maybe why your name is there in the paper you know this is something which we need to understand again management research how how do we understand actually when you talk about theory driven research basically if the, if contribute to theory or it helps to expand the boundary of the theory then those articles can get these get published in abs4 or abs3 star or cnrs1 or cnrs2 or abdc a star and to a certain extent in some abdc a category journals and this theory could be based on either positivism approach or interpretivism approach now positivism approach is actually that you have a you have a hypothesis and you are testing a hypothesis interpretism is actually you are generating a theory so for interpretivism i suggest people to read a uh, seminal work published in 1989 in academy of management review and there is a very very you know eisenhard 1989 article which actually throws a, enough light on how case based research can help to generate theory and there is a need to build a theory until unless now my question that it is not necessary that every time you have to build a theory rather than you can also actually help to expand the boundaries of the theory for example dynamic capability view Now, dynamic capability view or resource based view. Many people argue that this theory is used extensively, but I still believe that okay, it has been used extensively, and it, uh, these are the most popular theories. But again, there is a tremendous scope. There is tremendous room for improvement, and a lot of opportunities to expand these kind of theories. And that's why I believe that scholars need to engage in critical reading of the research articles published in a reputable outlet, rather than just going through the, you know, just Uh, reading the abstract and little bit of conclusion that will not help. You have to critically read line by line, and then you can understand exactly that. How can you understand how there is a big scope, big opportunity to you know expand the research? In fact, in one of the research, myself, my my colleague for Suwamba, Sharyar Akhtar and Professor Guna, we we spent two years on one of our IJP paper, and the reviewers are very critical, and me and for Suwamba. my friend you know we discussed that let's let's forget about this paper because i think we can't save this paper then i told uh, fosso omba and and i told uh, sharia can you give me time my samuel told me yes take time my friend how much time you want but you have to save the paper i said yes we'll do it and then we spent almost two years and then we studied a new behavior that we found a very interesting relationship that that the assumption that we holding that that this more this environmental dynamism has a, a linear effect a linear moderating effect and we challenge that existence based on a very seminal work published in static management journal by shilke based on that article i got a clue and we assumed that we took this hypothesis and we found that inverted u shaped relationship and probably that was a unique contribution to the body of big data analytics agility and adaptability literature and then we got excited and finally we found that after that experiment our paper was immediately accepted after one round of minor revision and this has generated a lot of confidence in us so we have to take a challenge sometimes we we have to uh, we have to face this kind of situation now there are many uh, scholars say that also oh, i have written a practice driven research or like that well practice driven research are very important for the managerial community but please no abs3 star and abs4 star journals are interested in publishing they probably are good or fit for the abs2 to a certain extent abs1 or cnrs4 or abdc b category and please be remember the articles which are getting published in these journals are less rigor in terms of theory 
and more practice oriented because they are either retesting the theory in different context i've seen in, in especially in indian phd especially i'm sorry i'm i'm sorry uh, but i'm very critical about this i've seen somebody is testing the you know model in context to uh, say pune data or mumbai data or nagpur data come on this is not a unique contribution just by changing the sample size and you believe that it's a contribution to the theory i think you need to every scholars need to be taught that this is not a theory changing the sample size only help to assess the reliability of the instrument and not the theory and this is something which we need to be very very cautious in interpreting this kind of studies what is the importance of publishing in abs4 and cnrs1 or abdc stuff first of all the manuscripts are published after multiple rounds of review so there is no chance of hanky and panky it's it goes to several rounds of review the manuscripts are published in these outlets generally generally i'll say demonstrate high degree of scientific rigor and this is we have to accept it the manuscripts are read by the top ranked scholars we have to understand that if for example i don't read articles published in abs2 or less than that i generally build my theory and you can see that if you read my articles you can see that my most of the references are either drawn from academic journal or management science or academy of management review or journal of marketing research or journal of operations management or international journal of Pro operation production management or igp or igp i i generally do not spend or waste my time in reading abs2 or less than that because i believe that it's a waste of time and waste of energy of course there are some good articles are there i do not be i shouldn't be biased but but again i am very much assured that if articles are getting published in top outlets they have gone through all this process and it saves my time that's simple largely articles published in these outlets and let me tell you one the review mindset actually when reviewers receive an any article for the review process the first thing that they do is that they read the reference section and when they find that references are weak then probably that they create a cognitive dissonance you know it they already form created a perception about the quality of the manuscript and this is true actually largely articles published in these outlets generally attract very high attention from scientific community I, and there is no denial about this because my most cited articles either from british journal management or international journal of operation production or international journal of production economics or igpr why is because these are well read and top journals publishing articles after several rounds of reviews and the way and that's why these journals attract more citations and we have to accept this uh, this reality moreover that abs4 or cnrs1 and abdc star publication generates high confidence in the mind of reviewers uh, i have been a uh, grant reviewer for finland for almost 2 years and you know when when we committee like when a committee of like a 10 or 12 reviewers sit down first of all we see that how many abs four star publications or abdc a star or cnr swan publication that authors have published uh, uh, applicants have, if they are not published probably we don't generate that much confidence in that particular researcher because we think that he's wasting the you know the tax money tax peer money by publishing in a wrong type of journal and multiplying because see if you publish in abs4 journal probably you are not multiplying you are not in a multiplication business uh, i will not be proud of seeing somebody cv having 100 publications even i feel sorry that in my initial years i published in lot of b category publication and some c category publication but i was not guided properly my journey had changed after meeting my colleagues my professor nezialte constantin blom and stephen child they told me rameshwar uh, we have to be very serious about the outlets and until unless and that's why since then i never published less than a star because it's very important that the outlets do, it's very very important so rather than chasing the numbers i would be impressed with someone saying that i have got 100 publications to their credit well that doesn't make any sense if you have 20 papers or 30 papers in your cv and all 20 papers are ft rank paper i'll salute that person so that's a simple so please my scholars don't count the number of publication on cv in fact i say that if you have published in c category journal please do not mention on your cv otherwise i'm sorry you are actually creating a negative perception in the mind of the reviewers it helps establish the reputation of scholars and the school in fact 
uh, uh, just now before this lecture, I was having a meeting with my professor, uh, David Bride, and we were actually talking about that from next year onwards, like we have to be very cautious about selecting the outlets. In fact, in my uh, Montpellier Business School, uh, my dean, uh, David Rabot, and still follow up and ask him, when you publish in CNS 3 journal, probably we don't talk to that person. Maybe, maybe, maybe you feel bad, but this is a brutal reality. You have to accept it. We, we create this kind of culture of competitions at the same time supporting each other. Uh, hello, do not waste the resources of the school by publishing in XYZ journal and you know just increasing your count that doesn't help school ranking, that doesn't help your merit and doesn't help to bring new perspective in the classroom. So be about selecting your journal. Uh, I may be sounding very bad and rough and like this, but this is the brutal reality. And this is how I've been taught by the, my, uh, my mentors. What are the competitive priorities of developing a research management for reputable outlets? Uh, I always, being an operation management scholar, so I always talk from the, uh, you know, the operations dimensions. It's the first chapter of operations management. See the speed, how quickly you can develop a manuscript paper because we are living in a very highly competitive environment and how quickly we can deliver a good manuscript is going to decide the fortune. How flexible you are because today we are living in the era of like emerging technology. So as a scholar, you might have started your research with supply chain, but to what extent you can embrace supply chain and big data analytics or blockchain technologies probably is going to decide the fate of the scholar. What value that your article is going to generate? Something which we need to be very, very cautious. And the quality, of course, is the number one priority. So these are the four dimensions are very, very important and most important for developing a good manuscript. Of course, I'm not able to discuss in detail. Probably we will not the right forum to discuss each aspect because probably we will discuss it or this kind of workshops. But these are the important priorities. Uh, how do you classify your sort? Sorry, sorry, sorry. How do you classify, what are the classification scheme of research manuscript? So research manuscript can be classified into four broader categories, conceptual paper, review-based paper, qualitative studies, and hypothesis-driven studies. Within conceptual paper, we have position article or theory building article. Like if you go, if you read Academy of Management Review, probably you'll find that most of the articles published in Academy of Management Review are either position article or theory building article. When you talk about review-based paper, either it is based on systematic literature review, based on Tranfield et al. 2003, or bibliometric analysis. I'm not a great fan of bibliometric analysis, but even I have also written bibliometric analysis paper with with some of my co-authors, but me, my colleagues still for upon other because uh, in UK, if you are publishing even bibliometric analysis in ABS four star journal, but during auditing it will be downgraded and it will be given or something two ranking. So in UK, just publishing your article in a top journal that doesn't help because there is a formal audit process is conducted and based on the nature of the article, the manuscript. Again, the rankings are given. So please be cautious. Bibliometric analysis, I believe it's a marketing tool for the journals, but doesn't help contribute to the theory. So I'm again cautious that please avoid bibliometric analysis paper as a scholar. Meta-analysis probably is the most serious kind of work and I suggest scholars to engage more into meta-analysis, which is actually help you to understand much better. When you talk about qualitative studies, actually, if you see the British universities are known for the qualitative studies, and luckily that I'm surrounded by all top qualitative researchers here, a case-based research is actually in action research. In fact, you know, my school and uh, Liverpool University, University of Liverpool, and my other colleagues from, you know, uh, from University of Leeds, Professor Gagan, they're all experts in these kind of studies. So even Professor Sil for upon, I'll, I'll, I'll tell someday that to deliver a lecture on case-based research because he's very, he's an expert in that. Uh, ethnographic studies and grounded theory. These are the very important theories. And many students complain that they don't have a data, they can, do not have an access to data. Come on, if you don't have an access to data, why not you develop qualitative study skill? But yes, unfortunately, we do not have training in Indian systems. 
and that's why i encourage uh, uh, indian top schools to collaborate with the top british universities or american schools uh, that they can build this capability in fact our doctor school of management is engaged in disseminating this kind of skills and probably we can look for such kind of collaborations so that we can help and train people to build these kind of skills and then there's a hypothesis driven studies Uh, which is based on theory like either you test your data using cross sectional data or longitudinal data that depending upon the nature of the uh, model and the tools so that's that's the how you go ahead i'm not going to discuss in detail about cross sectional longitudinal because for each uh, discussion i need one session separately this is not a forum this is a forum actually what editors are looking for so qualitative studies as you can see that uh, further we have empirical study when you say empirical study it could be theory building theory testing or theory building plus theory testing and that's how you do so case based research action research or ethnographic based studies or when you talk about theory testing it either is confirmative fact lines or goodness of fit or econometric tools i just want to caution actually I've seen many scholars performing exploratory fact analysis and confirmatory fact analysis together in one paper. If you are doing these kind of things, your paper will be outrightly rejected because when you perform exploratory fact analysis, that means you are developing a scale, and when you are testing a theory, then you perform a confirmatory fact analysis. So I have seen, unfortunately, people have not proper understanding. about these kind of fact analysis and for that reason good journals will never accept such kind of paper when it comes to longitudinal data you prefer econometric tools because a structural equation modeling although it has undergone certain level of modification but still they are not uh, you know well designed to handle longitudinal data sets and that's why we use more based econometric tools so that's what is very very important to understand so what do you get to play strategy now coming as a phd scholar phd thesis supervisor or independent scholar post doctoral scholar we need to be agile because we have to possess the speed the speed with which you can generate a very quality manuscript how can we sense the changes in the you know environment for example like after covid 19 it has op offered an immense opportunity for the management scholars to re examine the existing theory or to expand the boundary of the theory and you have to be flexible in terms of topics and the tools and the research design this is something which is very important similarly as a phd scholar thesis supervisor or independent scholar you need to be adaptable change in the manuscript structure research methods theory driven research post hoc analysis and other dynamic issues which decide the fate of a manuscript for example any articles getting published in abs4 there has to be post hoc analysis and which is very very important in fact without post hoc analysis you cannot expect your article to get published in in a reputable outlet and uh, align your manuscript design based on journal guideline i unfortunately have seen that people go for trial and error if their articles had got rejected in wiley based journal then they submit to emerald no please read the journal guidelines please try to understand all editors are doing these jobs as an ad hoc job they are extra responsibilities please they are not here to proof edit your manuscript they are also professors they have to take classes they have to publish their own research articles despite of all these additional responsibilities they are taking this responsibility of editing the journal so please try to understand the pain of the editors we are not paid people we are not paid huge money some journals like elsevier only pay some minimum uh, kind of like uh, uh, amount which doesn't make any sense and uh, emerald and other journals even don't pay so my question is that please try to understand editors are doing this job just because they feel that it's a responsibility to contribute to the society and nothing else we don't get much benefit so please try to understand save the save the energy of the editors we don't want to you know change, uh, correct your manuscript your grammar your structure and all these things so please look into the journal guidelines and read it carefully before submitting a paper speed like you know how quickly scholar can address research calls will give a cutting competitive advantage for instance how quickly scholars can identify right research topic in right time develop a right manuscript and publish in right outlet i term it as a four hours of publishing remember four hours of publishing which is very critical in present sense 
Scholars must have built capability to sense the dynamic nature of publications. For instance, the publishing is a highly complex in terms of growing expectation within scientific community and its relevance to practice. And the most important is how flexible you are. Like, are you willing to pick up new skills, new things? That's very important. Uh, adaptability that, as I told you that, come on, now let's move from the Scopus Index Journal. That's not going to help the institutions anymore. If some schools believe that by publishing Scopus Index or paid journal that is going to help the school reputation, I'm sorry. You are bluffing yourself, you're bluffing your institutions, and you're making mockery of the nation. But remember, you have to be cautious about it. Either way, it's better not to publish. Focus on your teaching and structural flexibility. Mixed methods, research design in terms of sampling design and data collection strategies and data analysis and writing skills, which are very, very important. And I feel that we need to have a proper kind of orientation and training. And that's why I requested Dr. Bandana Ma'am to, and my school is already organizing this kind of like continuous training uh, session so that scholars, PhD students, early career scholars can actually pick up these skills, which are very, very important for publishing in a top journal. Without having a proper skills, it's better not to enter into the battlefield, please. Otherwise you will be brutally killed and we don't have a heart because as an editor, we don't need to carry heart because we are handling more than, for example, this year, last year I've handled more than 1100 manuscripts in a year. Do you think that I will be thinking from my heart? No, I have to think from the brain because heart is actually for purify my oxygen, you know, my blood flow, not, not, to, not to apply my brain. And this is something with that. So scholars must align and that's why. Thank you very much. If anybody have anything to write to me, you can drop an email to my email ID, r.dubey at the rate of lgmu.ac.uk. Uh, I will try to address most of the queries. If I am not as agile, because try to understand, I have to take teach, I have to do the editing job, I have to do my own research. So I may take one or two days more time to respond. Thank you very much. And uh, I believe that if somebody have any queries, uh, I would like to answer to the questions. Thank you, sir. That was Thank very you. informative and uh, insightful. Uh, we now move on to the question and answers round. Uh, we had an overwhelming response to the event uh, from the research fraternity. And uh, we had a number of questions that we received for this session. However, given the time constraints, we would want to limit the number of questions. Nevertheless, we would take up some of these questions in the future uh, webisodes. And hence, we thank all the participants who have sent their questions. So the first question comes from Ms. Kavita Kamboj from uh, IGNO. I would read out this question on behalf of her. And uh, her question is, if we put Indian context in the title of our research publication, how do A-star journals perceive it? Is it underestimated? Uh, not underestimated. Again, I told you that it is not about like India or Pakistan or Bangladesh or Nepal. First of all, this is the wrong myth. But then in title, if you're putting in Indian context, I'm worried, can Newton's second law motion have a different definition in India and UK? Never. So remember, top journals publishes theory. And Indian, just because my sample size, my sample data has been collected from Indian context or in Nepal or Bangladesh, that doesn't change the theory, come on. Just because I have my own geographical limitation, that's why I'm able to collect data from India because I'm from India, okay? If I'm from UK, I'll collect data from UK because see, we researchers, we are not like uh, working for a consulting firm that we have an access, we have enough resources to collect data on large scale. As I told you that if a sample size of 200 or 300, if they are normally distributed, that means we can perform all parametric tests. That assumption is holding good. We can test the theory. Top journals, when you see the title in India, actually, even I also written, uh, because I was also not aware. And then my professor, you know, my mentor, uh, with whom I've worked actually, and he has helped me a lot actually, Professor Constantine Bloom, who is now current editor in GYDP, he said, I'm sure it's better to avoid country name in the title. It doesn't look good. Yes, in abstract, you can say, yes, my sample size are from this, this country, 
but never put into the title because then uh, then british uh, readers or the french scholars will not probably read your article because they feel that okay it's an indian theory so why to create why to create a negative perception in the mind of the readers from other country that okay this theory has been designed from india so it doesn't fit into our context which is not true basically so we have to be very cautious enough don't try to sell that okay you collected data from indian context that is your mentioned in research design but you don't have to put in the title title is about theory title is about the main core the theme of the article title should be written in such a manner that it reflect the whole manuscript in one single shot and that's why we have to be very cautious while writing the article uh, for that i believe that training is required that's why i told that five myths actually and this is one of the myth actually which i have already covered in directly in my uh, discussion thank you sir uh, now we have a question from uh, ms rajeshree nath from siom can you please unmute yourself and ask the question rajeshree good afternoon uh, this is rajeshree nath from symbiosis institute of operations management Uh, sir, what are the potential topics or uh, innovative areas of research that can be explored by an MBA student that will be well received by a star journal, especially on COVID and post-COVID scenarios? Thank you, Rajshree, for asking a very interesting questions, and I'm very impressed that you are talking about a star journal at this stage of career. And probably this is uh, this shows that how like you know, young has matured to a next level. uh first of all let me tell you one thing that uh, as an mba student you should be reading enough uh, don't worry about a star publication at this stage because a star publication probably may take 2 to 3 years minimum time because sometimes the we see the manuscript submission date and the acceptance date but you do not know that to develop a manuscript probably has taken more than 2 or 3 years so uh developing a manuscript for a top journal takes a lot of time probably your two years uh, mba degree time doesn't allow you to engage yourself in that but let me tell you one thing a star is not a distance dream because i'll tell you because dr varna ma'am is aware one of my colleague actually dr um, uh, vg venkatesh actually he along with uh, some like uh, but, uh, some kind of pat- patwa and some students actually he has undertaken a paper and during that time actually i'm talking about 2013 14 he published one article in journal of retail and consumer survey which is abdc a category journal so our students have published in a category journal in uh, uh, from our school only and that time uh, this was not there so it is not impossible actually if they already have published in 2013 14 uh, in a category journal in elzevia so we can expect a star also published because because one thing i've seen that uh, six sigma uh, opportunity gives you a lot of insight because i tell you that what is the best thing i was sharing that why actually i transform myself into the good researcher good scholar because symbiosis is strategically located and i was early in the morning I was talking to professor david brider why siam is a very good location because it is surrounded by more than thousands and 1200 manufacturing companies which is unique you never find in any part of the world so pune and nashik are being strategic located so you have an access to the data you can go to the company and i've seen that just because you belong to symbiosis brand industry welcome you gives you an opportunity so take it as an opportunity collect that data in a true spirit take the effort of the uh, uh, take the help of the professor in redesigning your research design and i'm sure that you can uh, really write a very good manuscript and publish in top journal so i think it's not a distant dream even if you have written a good work probably after one year or one and a half year you can see the fruit of that result and covid 19 post covid 19 is a excellent example because how indian manufacturing companies are coping with these challenges how they are devising i think you have got a lot to learn and uh, and then you also can talk about how six sigma can help the companies to come out from the uh, covid 19 scenario i think there are a lot of uh, topics you can talk about how the big data analytics artificial intelligence are playing an important role in shaping manufacturing capabilities of these regions or uh, probably i think you have got a lot of opportunities to undertake a lot of good research so uh, merge the important classical theories with emerging technologies to address this problem thank you sir thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you 
So the next question comes from Dr. Balachandar of uh, Amrita University. So can yeah. you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Am I visible? Good evening. You're audible, sir. Yes, yes Dr. Bala, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was wonderful, sir. Uh, let me uh, ask my question. Uh, the question is on uh, summary. How to create an impressive summary of our findings, making it stand out? Uh, is there any specific uh, method or way you suggest than the existing ones? Little, I don't know. It uh, could be trivial for you, but still, that's my question. No, no, sir. Uh, Dr. Bala, sir, thank you very much for asking a very, very most important question. Actually, I'll tell you that. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier, that most of the reason and actually the papers are getting rejected in top journal because the theoretical that the discussion section is weak actually i've seen that uh, scholars struggle to uh, develop two sections particularly introduction section and discussion section in fact they are the two hard the reason is that in in especially in indian uh, point of view or indian subcontinent i've seen that Scholars are trained to more about data analytics and they talk about tools and techniques. Come on. These are good for like consulting or getting a job in companies. But when it comes to writing a manuscript for a top journal, the theoretical discussion is more important. As you rightly said that in theoretical discussion is not, I've seen that when you read articles, like how does it contribute to theory? I've seen that 95% of scholars struggle to write. When you say contribute a theory, means you need to say that, okay, whether your analysis of findings do contribute to the dynamic capability view or resource-based view or contingent resource-based view or knowledge-based view or institutional theory. So we have to be very clear. And in order to understand exactly how discussion sections are built, I suggest every scholars to read articles from say five to six top journals. These journals are Academy of Management Journal, Academy of Management Review, Strategic Management Journal, Journal of Marketing or Journal of Marketing Research, and Human Resource Management Journal, British Journal of Management, and Journal of Operation Management. Probably I've exceeded my five lists or I'm saying 10 because I don't want to, you know, underplay all the top journal. So there are 10 to 15 top journals. I'd like particularly recommend people to read from Strategic Management Journal. That's number one. If somebody wants to know about operational theory, please read Strategic of Management Journal or Journal of Management. Academy of Management Journal will offer you in-depth insight exactly how to build a theory and test a theory. Because Academy of Management Journal is known for building a theory or expanding a theory and testing a theory. Academy of Management Review is purely known for publishing theory-driven articles. All seminal discussions related to theory will get published in Academy of Management Review. So when you read all these kind of journals, actually, when you read and read and read and read, thought process develops like that. We built a very different perspective of building a discussions, arguments, debate. And I believe that reading is the most important ways to improve our writing skills. Because unfortunately, we read from ABS2 category journal, ABDCB category journal, and try to benchmark with those articles probably that's a wrong way. So I, that's why I suggest for you, professor, that whenever you are teaching doctor student, tell your doctor student to read from this top 10 journal, irrespective of any discipline. Uh, Strategic Management Journal, Academy Management Journal, that such kind of journals. If you are a managed scholar, whether you are from human resource, whether you're from organizational behavior, whether you're from strategy, whether you're from operations, whether you're from marketing, these two, three journals are common to everyone. For example, you know, in Alaska 1981, which is the foundation of structural equation modeling, actually. This theory has come from general marketing research. Or when I say testing the non-response bias, uh, followed by Armstrong overturn 1977 article, again, it was got published in general marketing research. So this, although I'm an operation management scholar, pursue my empirical research, but without the general marketing research, I cannot go ahead. So that's why I believe this is very, very important. Reading from a top journal will lay down the foundation for writing a good manuscript. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Murnal Kumar from SIU would put forth his next question. Mr. Murnal Kumar, can you just unmute yourself? 
Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, Nanal. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, so, how to proceed with interdisciplinary research in a new area? Like, for example, I'm interested in doing research in the field of marketing analytics, and I want to know how artificial intelligence and machine learning would impact the marketing field. Uh, would A star journals find this appealing? So, what are your views in this area? Uh, there are two options. One the hard way, but it's not impossible. And uh, one of my uh, junior colleague, or I would say student, he has done that. He is actually there, Dr. Vishay. He did two PhD, in one in the area of information system and one in the area of analytics, actually, from IIT Bombay. Of course, I don't suggest that way, but he did it, actually. There is another way, actually, I'll suggest that. When you're doing marketing analytics, something like that, analytics is something a separate field actually, which requires a lot of skills actually. And we have to accept that. Many people tell me that I want to acquire skills in analytics. I do not, I do not be harsh to them, but let me tell you one thing, to become an analytics expert, you need to have a very sound mathematical foundation and statistical foundation. For example, I'll tell you, uh, Dr. Radha ma'am knows very well that I should teach structural equation modeling through Excel. I never used to use software. And I've proven everyone that how the results are matching with SPSS. Because if you are very good in analysis, if you know how the mathematics behind that, because factor has is nothing but it's a vector algebra. Actually. So for analytics, actually, you need to have a very strong foundation of matrix vector algebra. You have to have a very strong knowledge of graph theory approach and all these things, which is not possible from a marketing scholar. So I suggest you that get in touch with some analytics scholars who are very good in analytic skills, like Twitter analytics. For example, I'll tell you there is a professor Apanka from IIT Delhi. He's very good in Twitter analytics. Of course, he's coming from the computer science and engineering information management background. So there are people actually with this kind of background and they're very good in that. So if you feel that you have a marketing theory, you can get in touch with either Dr. Apanka or Dr. Abhishek Bela. These are the people who are very good in all these things. You probably can work together. So my suggestion is that building a team is very important. For example, I was not interested in big data analytics, but luckily being an engineering background and I love mathematics, mathematics is my blood. So I actually took advantage of that. So my friend, Dr. Fosso Wamba, Samuel Fosso Wamba, he told me, Ramesh, let's get into big data analytics research. And that time nobody did empirical research. So Professor Gunas Ekran, my our mentor, and Samuel Fosuwamba was my friend. We together decided and started working. And, and probably you know that our best big data analytics papers we have produced. So what I suggest is that you need to find a right kind of person. Don't drop an email, please. And avoid that. I met Nezi Alte in, in Siam, and then I met him in Chicago. So you have to spend time with the scholar, make, spend time, develop the chemistry because just writing an email to a scholar, I can develop a chemistry that doesn't happen. So you have to meet with the scholars. You have to discuss, you have to build a trust because for be, building a good team, you need to have a good trust and faith in each other. And this is, this is the foundation actually. And that's why you see that uh, myself, if you see my papers, I've never worked beyond my six or seven people. And I have been holding that team for last eight years, actually, because it's a, it's a clear example of good trust, faith, and respect for each other, actually. And that's very important for building a good team. So I suggest you drop any message to all the potential scholars, arrange a meeting, you discuss your research plan with them, and tell that how, how their skills can help you to advance the debate. And that's fine. You can go ahead with your research projects. Because I will not suggest you to learn Python coding at this stage, which is not possible. Okay, many people say, yes, I can learn, but no, it's not possible every time because you need to have a very sound mathematical foundation. So what I suggest, build a very strong team of different competences, merge together and work on good projects. That's what I can suggest you. Thank you, sir. I, I could Thank explain you. you in short time in a in a better way actually, which we did it actually. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Professor Berge from SION. Yeah, Professor Berge, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, Professor Berge, can you please unmute yourself? Good afternoon, sir. From Yes, sir. 
Yeah. How are you? Yeah, it's been a long time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you virtually today. Uh, you have answered most of the questions and uh, doubts uh, from my head. Uh, Thank you but, very much. Uh, I'm writing right now a research paper for non-ABDC, but I'll try definitely for uh, ABDC and uh, A-star journals. Uh, what are most important two things I should do to um, get to that level? Uh, Dr. Bagel, let me tell you one thing. Uh, I need to, because I know you for last eight, ten years, yeah, and at true. least I am the right person to tell, uh, comment on this thing. Yes, that's right. First of, all, first of all, you are a right, you have a very strong theoretical background. If I'm not wrong, you are a production engineer. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Berger, you're a production engineer, if I'm not wrong? Yes, 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 sir. Yeah. So you see, you have a very strong, you have a very strong hold over Excel modeling. Yes. You, you have a lot of skills. You know, I tell you that we have to change the mindset, actually. Sometimes we believe that, yeah, if we can manage our show with these kind of journals, why to move to the next layer? Phil, this is something which you have to change ourselves. We have to prepare ourselves that, okay, if somebody can publish in A-Star and Financial Times and UT Dallas, they're not coming from Mars and Jupiter's and any other planet. They are from Earth. They also have the same processing capability. They have two hands. They have similar, you know, features. The orientation need to be different, actually. So once you prepare yourself for this kind of like goal and just start reading, see, first thing that you have to do is that read, 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 read. Yeah. So you have to read a lot. And then once you've read all these articles, you develop the flavor of academic writing. This is number one. Because top journals are known for academic writing skills which we lack in most of the cases, but we can build through reading actually. So what I suggest, you create a folder of very good seminal paper and continuously read those paper. And then after six months, you start writing a paper, you will always produce a world-class manuscript. This is what I believe. This is the best and the most ethical way of publishing a top journal. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, surely I'll do. I'll follow your words. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you, so sir. we will take the last question from Dr. Parag Arun Narkhade. We would uh, forward some of the questions to you uh, because of uh, lack of time at this point. Uh, can I request Dr. Parag Arun to uh, unmute himself and ask the question? Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Parag Narkhade. Yeah, Dr. Parag, how are you? So we met at Bangalore, sir, I, at IBA. You got you received uh, our best reviewer award from Ames International. That time we are there. Oh, you remember so many things. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Actually, my question is, what is the methodology of reviewing for ABDC journals? And what do reviewers of A-star journals look specifically in a regular paper? Very good question. Professor Nakhra, as I told you that the, my presentation was based on the editor's and the reviewer's perspective. That's why I designed it, actually. I'll hand over this presentation to Dr. Ratna, ma'am, and Arun, Dr. Arun, who will help to distribute this presentation. I believe that anybody can use this presentation. Uh, the things that we have to be very, very important that whenever you are writing any manuscript, as I told you, as a reviewer, first thing that they will look, they look at the title, and then they'll look into the reference section. Okay. When you are writing an article for A star journal or A category journal or even good B category journal like management decision, 70% mm -hmm. of your references should be drawn from the A star list journal. Because generally what happened, if you have not read article in SMG or Academy of Management Review, Academy of Management Journal, and you are claiming that this is my research gap, I said, hello, you haven't read the best outlet and you're claiming that this is your research gap. Come on. So you have to, because research gaps, see, when you are trying to publish in a top journal, remember you have to challenge the existing works published in a top reputable journal. Challenge in the sense like, just read an article by Alveson and Sandberg 2011, that just finding the gap is not enough to extend a debate. 
you have to challenge existing proposition you have to challenge existing theory and then only can actually create a curiosity in the mind of the reviewers and the readers so we have to understand there is another way called problem uh, that's a theory of problematization that means you have to find out the challenges and that's why what happened my one of my colleague dr gary graham uh, from university of leeds actually uh, we just got our one article accepted actually in anos operations research it was a theory driven article he also raised the same question i'm sure let's have a challenges let's challenge the existing theories and i really agree that it's a alvesen sandberg if you read this article your 50% of the questions will be answered i tell everyone to read alvesen and sandberg 2011 published in academy manual review thank you sir thank you very much so you know just reading reading of good journal article just just spend 6 month my friend reading good articles after 6 month you will be in the next level because most important thing that today our schools are actually changing the number so people are engaged in writing rather than reading actually no reading is the most important pillar of writing if you just write 10 good paper but read 1000 paper that's a good actually thank you sir thank you very much pala thank you sir uh yes, due to the paucity of time uh, we cannot take any more questions there are a number of questions in the chat box yes, we yes. would request them to please uh, forward those questions to you or they can forward those questions to us so that we could forward it to you uh, professor bharti professor uh, i'm sorry we cannot take your questions and i will have to uh, and uh, pasi sir is also there ashima can you share so we can <laughs> take that questions later or uh, please share okay extremely sorry uh, so for want of time we would close the question answer round here and now we come to the end of this event before we bid adieu i would uh, like to propose the vote of thanks and at symbiosis uh, institute of operations management we have always aimed at challenging ourselves and achieving bigger milestones as we come to the end of this first webisode we cannot but thank enough our first speaker and expert for the day dr rameshwar dube thank you sir for taking time off your busy schedule and addressing the research community it means a lot thank so you your views thank were you highly much. insightful and i'm sure we are going to take home a lot of learnings and have greater clarity on what has to be done for publishing good quality research we thank each member of the audience professors students practitioners for their participation in this first webisode uh, thank you ms kavita kamboj ms uh, rajashri rajnath i'm sorry i correct myself uh, rajashri nath dr balachandar mr mrunal dr prashant uh, dr parag for the questions and this event could not have taken shape without the support and guidance of our director dr vandana sonwani uh, today's webisode is a culmination of the efforts of our faculty in charge dr uh, arun kumar and his team comprising of mr ashwin amit abhinav abhishek and mayur we also take this opportunity to thank our it team led by mr mahesh and satish our admin team mr rajesh and samir and the team from our director's office uh, ms ujwala and uh, devre the support received from our faculty at sion uh, for this event goes without a mention we shall be floating a feedback form shortly and we request all the participants to take time off and uh, fill and share with us the topics which you wish to hear uh, from the editors in the future episodes i end this session with the famous quote of swami vivekananda arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached so do join us for the next webisode of editors choice on the 28th october with professor dimitri ivanov from the berlin school of economics wow. he is the editor of international journal of integrated supply chain management and an associate editor in the international journal of production research uh, just to name a few the many more that he is uh, on the editorial board of until then happy researching i dr ratna take your leave thank you
Thank you, Pam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir.